I am Jason Walls from QA Cafe, and I have been involved in the broadband forum for 20 years. Is that right, Tim? Yeah, at least 20 years. Um, and uh, so it's, I, I work for a company called QA Cafe. We are the makers of CD Router, um, the official test platform for protocols like TRX9, USP, and a number of uh, other things, um, and also our passport test platform for IoT devices. Uh, and uh, I have been the uh, the broadband forum uh, work area director, the, the 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 broadband user services work area director, um, since we invented that term. <laughs> uh, and that is the group that creates TR sixty nine uh, and USB created TR sixty nine. Oh, uh, <laughs> and uh, and USB. And uh, so we, you know, it's been a labor of love for a very long time, and uh, I'm glad you are all here to kind of learn more about it. That's what day one is going to be like. Um, I am also the host of the Epic Melon podcast, conversations with people like you uh, to humanize us in the face of the rest of the world. Um, but I like to sit down with people and find out how they got into telecom and networking and how it's usually by accident and uh, <laughs> and uh, what we do in our spare time and why we love doing it. So uh, you can check that out on YouTube. And if you ever want to be on the show, just uh, just let me know. So I say uh, I say it's been a labor of love because whenever we make something new, like USP, of course, it's not new anymore. Um, the very first questions that everyone starts to ask when a new technology comes out is, oh, well, how many people are doing it? <laughs> and so we released USP in 2018. That was the first one. I, what happened was we all sat down in a room uh, at, in my hometown uh, at my office in 2015, and we, uh, we decided that we were going to rip open the hood of Tier 69 and be like, okay, what it is that what is it that we have to do next? And uh, it was it was fun, it was fun, it was a good time. And then um, three years later, we had the standard TR three six nine. Back in twenty twenty, we did a survey very similar to this one um, about um, about USP and a number of other things from operators. This was a survey of 111, 111 operators this time um, about people's plans to deploy USB. And obviously in 2020, these numbers were different. We redid the survey last year, um, and these were the results. So barring the people who said they didn't know what we were talking about, um, <laughs> it was upwards of 84% of the operators that we surveyed said that they plan to deploy, they are, are already deploying USB or plan to deploy it within eight, 18 months. Um, that's very humbling and promising. Um, and there were a number of other great it's insights from that survey. Um, the subject of this summit is going to be talking a lot about the transition from TR69 uh, to USP. Uh, so one of the questions that we asked uh, was what your transition plan was. And these were some of the results here, right? And one of the things that we always try to hit home with, tier, with, with USP is that it is meant to coexist with TR69 uh, for as long as it needs to. Um, and it's meant to, to make it easy such that that tra transition can be facilitated. Um, and uh, the other thing that we learned um, that came up a lot in the last summit is that sometimes um, the operators are deploying it for different USP for different use cases first, rather than the same use cases as TR69 um, and then making the transition that way, right? That was one of the really great ones from the operator uh, roundtable last year was we had uh, one operator that had decided, you know, what, we're, we're just going to keep our tier nine deployment for gateways, but do USP entirely on the set top boxes and then work backwards from there. Um, this was another interesting one <laughs> where the, the great thing about USP is that it is designed to manage any device. Right. It is. There's a lot of legacy in tier 69 that's built around the fact that it was going to manage gateways, um, especially as anyone who's familiar with trying to deploy tier 69 is familiar, uh, especially uh, when it comes to devices that are behind the gateway. Right. There's a number of mechanisms that we had to put in place to try to mitigate that. And they're not all that great. <laughs> um, and so we, you know, we designed USB with that in mind. Um, and so one of the questions we asked on the survey was what other devices in the home are you considering? putting USB on. And I think 
kind of speaks for itself. You know, the, there's it's no coincidence that the top one is also the biggest pain point that pe that people reported from that survey. Um, and then the next two are the things that we already have data model for. But at least 32% said smart home, um, which again is is a vision of the future. And I probably should have shown this slide first because it hits my point. My <laughs> it's uh it's my point home. Um, you can see the top use cases there, right? And managed Wi-Fi, as we've although as we discussed on on Tuesday, we had a nice sit down at lunch, um, with kind of a guided discussion around managed Wi-Fi. And the conclusion that we came to is that we really shouldn't be talking about managed Wi-Fi. We should be talking about the managed subscriber experience as a whole. Um, but the biggest pain from that comes from Wi-Fi optimization, and so it's no surprise that people are using that as the top use case. But Smart home and IoT managed services is number two, which I think is really incredible. Um, and uh, all of the other use cases that you would expect from uh, any device management platform. What is this all really about at the end? So there's been an ongoing sort of uh, goal in the industry that for a long, long, long time, that has gone through many iterations in many different organizations uh, to create a uh, open software platform that applications can that that can uh, facilitate the installation of applications on consumer networking devices. And now that necessity is so strong <laughs> uh, that a while ago, um, the folks from uh, Purple Foundation actually came to us and were like, "Hey, can we use USP?" Um, internally on a device to be able to um, make an inter interoperable platform for applications. And we said, yes, of course we can do that. Uh, so over the last two to three years, the things that we've been adding to USB are the functions necessary to facilitate this. And this is really, this it all ties together with the, uh, with the use cases that the operators were pointing out in some of those other survey results. And that is value added services is the thing that operators need and want in the future to be able to deliver that complete subscriber experience. And because they're going to get blamed when things go wrong anyway. <laughs> uh, and so that's, that's where we are now, right? So USB started, you know, sort of as just a making us making tier 69 more efficient um, and setting that vision for the future. And now it's coming full circle to realizing that Holy grail of an interoperable application platform for gateways. So it's been uh, it's been a cool journey. So uh, now you're here at the USP Summit. This is our agenda for the week. Um, today we're going to talk about um, it's today is kind of a training day, but we're also going to really try to focus on that uh, transition from Tier Six Nine to USP and the differences between the two protocols. Um, why we've done what we've done. Uh, how the, in the afternoon when uh, John gives his talk, he's going to talk about. The USB services architecture, which is which are those, um, which is the app application enabled gateway that I was talking about, um, and then we'll have a roundtable of the people who have been talking today. Uh, but today is really about understanding um, the why, the how of USB, how it relates to Tier Six Nine, um, and what you can do to make your journey easier if you're planning on doing it. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to talk a lot about the business cases behind it and the success stories that are already out there right now um, among uh, out in the industry. Um, and we have some great speakers uh, from the operators who are super excited about the stuff that they've done with it. Um, and then we have a couple of roundtables in the afternoon that includes uh, our another operator roundtable with um, some of the folks who uh, who are going to be on these talks. Actually, the uh, operator roundtable is also going to have Wojciech. <laughs> I should fix that uh, from from Orange, and um, so you know they'll talk about their real experiences so far and their plans for the future. Um, and then we will also have a roundtable with some of the open source projects that are out there, um, many of whom are adding USP to those platforms and how we are all working together to make this happen. Uh, we are going to be having a live demo in the back of the room um, during, you know, during the break and stuff. And that's going to be, that's between um, DT and AVM and Xeros. They're just going to be showing some, actually, Daniel, you want to talk a little bit about that? You got a microphone over there. Yeah. <laughs> this is on. Yep. 
Okay. Um, yeah, we, we are going to do a little a bit of uh, pop-up demos. So we have a couple of people here from, well, Xeros and Deutsche Telekom and also AVM. Um, there are some tables in the back. Um, so we have some, some pop-up demos since we couldn't do like a permanent um, setup here. And yeah, we are going to show anything around um, how an operator would use it. Um, we are going to show how USP works in, in action. So if, if you're interested to see, you know, how easy it is to, to use and what you can do with it, um, I'm happy to show you anything um, you're interested in. There. One thing I do want to point out about that demo is I have three logos up here. And so it's not three separate demos. It's actually one um one big example of how this is all working between three different partners yeah so yeah. Volker from from Deutsche Telekom wanted to show a little bit behind the scenes um so he might actually show um the the, the system in action um as it is used by Deutsche Telekom um of course I, I'm not exactly sure what what he will show in terms of you know data privacy and and stuff but yeah. um yeah so he, he will definitely give a little bit of insight of, of how an operator uh, actually uses this today. Cool. All right. I'm going to repeat myself on this many times over the course of this week, uh, today and tomorrow. So uh, definitely get involved. This is how we get stuff done. Uh, we have an awful lot of fun doing this. And uh, as anyone can, who has joined recently can attest, we have a lot of new people this week, which is great. Um, Join the BBF if you haven't already. Talk to Rhonda about membership options. Um, if you have a USP agent solution, get BBF.369 certified. Um, I mentioned CD Router in the beginning. That is the official test tool for the program. Um, but it's it's a very easy process. Uh, you can do all the testing yourself and then submit the results to the private forum. Um, join the Connected Home Council where you get to hear more of my voice, where we talk about sort of the marketing side of the, the standards that are produced uh, in on the connected home side from the broadband forum and uh do join the bbf slack slack space if you're a member uh, we have a number of channels there that uh are very busy and people ask questions on them all the time so uh that's that's where you can get the most immediate answers to any questions <laughs>